Many years after his grandfather narrates the story of a hidden treasure that only a few people knew about, a man named Ben teams up with a group of explorers to find this treasure. After following the clue he got from his grandfather, Ben discovers that the name on the clue refers to an old ship. One of his friends, Riley, helps find the location of the ship, and as all the explorers get down to start looking for it, Ben notices that the ship is under a pile of snow. After digging for a while, the ship's location is confirmed, and he tells the others. He then thanks one of his colleagues, Ian, for believing in him and investing in the expedition, despite people labeling him and his entire family as clueless for going after a clue that made no sense. Ben then enters the ship with his team, and after looking around, they find a room with many barrels of gunpowder. After taking a closer look, he finds a dead body holding onto a barrel, and as he checks it, he sees a package with a pipe inside it. As he tries to understand why it was being guarded, he sees that there's an inscription on it. He uses his blood to figure out what's written there, and it only turns out to be another clue, which leaves Ian looking frustrated. Despite struggling with the clue for a while, Ben decodes it and says it's about an invisible map at the back of one of the most important documents in history, which is the Declaration of Independence. Just as he says it will be hard to lay their hands on such a document, Ian says they can steal it. Ben says he won't let that happen, but this makes Ian tell one of his men named Shaw to threaten him with a gun. However, they realize that without Ben, they won't be able to decode any more clues they find. Ian then threatens to kill Riley if he doesn't tell them all they need to know. Before they can do anything, he lights up a flare and threatens to drop it on the gunpowder around them. Despite thinking he's bluffing, Ben throws it, but Ian catches it. However, it burns his hand, and he eventually drops it on the gunpowder. Before the ship explodes and kills them, Ian and Shaw leave Ben and Riley inside while they run away. However, Ben finds a secret exit and uses it to escape to a safe place before the whole ship blows up, with Ian thinking the two men are dead. When they get back to the city, Ben and Riley go to the FBI headquarters to drop a tip that someone would try to steal the Declaration of Independence document in a few days. Because their story doesn't sound believable, they are ignored. They then proceed to the National Archives Museum, which is where the document is. They ask to see the director, Abigail, but when they also narrate their story to her about how they know a map is hidden at the back of the Declaration document, she believes they're lying and only making up things. When they leave her office, both men go over to admire the document, and while they look at it, Ben says he's going to steal it so that Ian doesn't get to it first. But Riley says it's an impossible task, and also takes him to a library where he provides his friend with details about how secure the document is. However, Ben says all they have to do is to get the document to be moved to the preservation room, which is less guarded. Despite not being sure of the plan, Riley agrees to help, and together they start working on the plan. To get Abigail's fingerprints and the passcode to the preservation room, Ben sends her a gift coded in a chemical that will leave her prints on the keyboard after she's done typing the codes. Things seem to work out well for him during the planning process, but Ian is also preparing his men to attack the museum during an upcoming gala. On the night of the gala, after the document is moved to the preservation room, Ben enters the building successfully while disguised as a staff. After he changes his clothes and meets with Abigail, she looks surprised to see him. He lies that he's there because he made a huge donation to the museum, but he only takes advantage of this to steal her champagne glass so he can get her fingerprints. Meanwhile, Ian and his men also arrive at the museum, and they break in through an underground tunnel that leads into the building. After a while, Ben successfully makes his way into the preservation room, and while trying to steal the document, Riley's access to the cameras gets compromised by Ian's men. Ben then decides to carry the whole frame out through the elevator. On his way out, Ian and his men see him, and they look shocked since they thought he was dead. They try to shoot him, but he blocks the bullets with the bulletproof glass protecting the document. Ben eventually gets into the elevator and takes out the document from its case. As he heads out, he tries to avoid Abigail, who has figured out that his name is not on the guest list. Ben hides inside a store in the museum, but as he's about to leave with the document, the cashier thinks he's trying to steal one of the replicas of the declaration document, which is on sale. She tells him to pay for it, and even though he's with the actual document, he uses his card to pay so he can leave. On his way out, Abigail sees him and follows him. As he drops the document into the back of Riley's van, she asks him what he's doing. He brings out the document, and she realizes what he did. Ben gives it back to her when she starts to shout, 
and as she also calls for any police officer around, Ian sees her with the document and tells his men to go after her. Ben tries to defend her, but she eventually gets taken away. Meanwhile, the museum guards have found out about the stolen document and they immediately put the place on lockdown and call the FBI to come over. Inside Ian's van, Abigail is asked to give up the document, but she says she won't. As the driver of the van then struggles to drive well, Ian and his men lose control and Abigail tries to escape. However, she ends up only hanging on the door. Riley and Ben are following the van so they can help her, but after a while, Ian gets the document from her. Just then, Ben also helps her get into Riley's van before she is killed. They then get off the main road, but as Ian opens the document inside his van, he sees that it's a fake and Ben has played him. Meanwhile, Abigail laments about how Ben stole the document, which is now in someone else's hands, but he brings out the real document and says he bought a replica because he knew he could get into trouble with the real one. He also tells her he only tried to steal it to stop Ian from stealing it first because he's desperate to find the treasure. As the two men then talk about trying out different chemicals on the back of the document, Abigail says she can't let them do that. Riley says they know what to do and already have a lab set up in Ben's house. However, he says they can't go there because the FBI will be looking for him at the house. He says he used his card at the museum store and they would be tracing him already. As they stop the van to think, Ben says some of the items that are clues to finding the treasure are at his house. He says one of them includes the letters written by a man named Franklin, who is also connected to the treasure he's looking for. Ben remembers that his dad has some copies of the letters, so he decides to pay him a visit. Abigail tries to escape with the declaration, but he stops her. She then agrees to come with him, because she's now curious to find out about what he's looking for. Meanwhile, the FBI, led by an agent named Sadusky, raids his house and finds a lot of things about him, including the letters he talked about. The FBI boss then tells his men to start looking for information regarding his family members who are still alive. Shortly after, Ben arrives at his father's house. Despite saying he hopes his son is not there to see him about the treasure, his father Patrick gets angry when Ben asks about the letters. He says he can't believe his son is still going around looking for clues after he spent his entire life also looking for the treasure. He adds that he has given up because he believes the treasure is only a myth that was formed to keep the country's enemies busy looking for nothing. His son doesn't seem to pay attention to this, and he also checks the back of the declaration document and finds some codes, which are clues associated with the words on the letters he's looking for. He asks Patrick again for the letters, but his father says he already gave them away to a museum in Philadelphia. With that, Ben leaves the house with Abigail and Riley. By the time the FBI arrive at the house, they only meet Patrick tied to a chair, saying his son left him like that and took his car. Sandusky then tells his men to start tracking the car. Meanwhile, Ian also figures out that the clue they found from the pipe on the ship is linked to the letters. He finds out that there are copies of the letters in Philadelphia, so he heads over there. Instead of going to decode the next clue by themselves, Riley gets a small schoolboy to do it for him. Ian also arrives right on time, and the boy bumps into him while going to meet Riley. When it's time to get the last word, Ian sees the boy decoding something on a paper. He follows the boy outside, but Riley has already left the place after figuring out the last word by himself. He goes to meet Ben and Abigail to inform them of the coded message he got from the letters. They figure out that it's associated with the time on the clock outside the Independence Hall. They immediately head over there to find yet another clue. However, Ian has also gotten information from the schoolboy regarding what he helped Riley with, so he also heads over there with his men. After figuring out where the clock points, Ben finds a mark on a brick wall. He opens it and sees a really old pair of glasses. He goes back to meet Abigail and Riley, after which he uses the glasses to look at the map on the back of the declaration document. There, he's able to see a symbol as well as some words written next to it. Just then, they see Ian walking around with his men. They decide to split up, with Abigail and Riley taking the declaration document with them. They're able to avoid being captured, but after a while, Ian takes the document away from them, just after a bus almost hits them. They immediately call Ben to tell him, and he says they need to meet him where he parked his car. However, the FBI have found the car, so as he arrives, they arrest him. Abigail and Riley arrive just in time, but they're able to run away before anyone sees them. While in FBI custody, Ben tells Sadusky everything that has happened, which includes Ian stealing the declaration document. As the FBI boss is taking a look at the glasses from the brick wall, Ben realizes that there's another way to use them. 
Suddenly, he gets a call from Ian and is allowed to take it. Ian tells him to bring the glasses to meet him at a public place. He also tells him to inform the FBI not to follow him. However, the FBI can't miss out on an opportunity to catch the bad guy, so they get their agents on site when Ben is about to meet his old friend. It ends up being a setup, and Ian's men help Ben escape. While he's being taken to meet Ian, Abigail calls him and says she had to strike a deal with his old friend to help him escape. She, however, says it came at a cost, and he'll have to take Ian to where the treasure is. When the old friends meet, Ian returns the declaration document and the pipe from the ship, after which he asks for the latest clue Ben has found. When he lies that he has nothing, his old friend shows him that he has kidnapped Patrick, and with this he confesses that the symbol he saw on the map is for a church. When they all get there, Ben checks the map again with the glasses, and this time he sees another clue that shows him a strange name. As they all wonder what it could mean, they discover that the church has an underground room where people are buried. While Ian and his men go in, Patrick calls back his son and says they need to find a way to make Ian free them because he'll kill them when they're no longer helpful to him. Just then, Ian calls Ben to see where the next clue takes them. They see the name from the map on a wall, and after they break it, they find a tunnel. Ian tells Ben to lead the way, and as they see where it leads, they find a really old place with wooden stairs and elevators. Despite Patrick saying it's dangerous to take the old wooden stairs to see what's beneath them, Ian insists that everyone continues moving. Suddenly, the stairs break, and Shaw falls to his death. The entire staircase structure eventually falls apart, and they all have to jump on the wooden elevator to survive. Even with Shaw's death, Ian says he must find the treasure. Not long after, the elevator leads them to an empty room. As Ian asks where the treasure is, Ben looks disappointed and says there's nothing in the room, but his old friend thinks he's hiding something. He threatens to leave them and take the elevator back up if Ben doesn't give him a clue, and just then, Patrick says the clue is in the lantern inside the empty room. He says there's a similar one in a church in Boston, and that's where the treasure truly is. Ian leaves them and says he'll be back for them when he gets his treasure. As Riley laments that they'll die out in the unknown place, Ben and Patrick tell him and Abigail that they lied to Ian. They then find yet another clue, leading them to another room, which shows that someone might have been there before them. Ben is disappointed, and he says his father has always been right. However, Patrick says he wasn't right, and the treasure has probably been taken away by whoever found it first. As they try to see if there's a door that leads out of the place, Ben sees some locks on the wall. He also identifies a missing lock that takes the shape of the pipe he saw on the ship. He brings it out and puts it in, and interestingly, it leads to a place filled with treasures, including the special one his father and grandfather had been looking for. They all look happy with this, and after a while, they see a staircase leading outside. When Ben gets outside, he sees a man and asks for his phone. He calls Sadusky, who then arrives within a short time. He tells him about the room full of treasures, but says he doesn't want any of it for himself. In return for delivering the treasures to the FBI, he says he doesn't want Abigail to face any consequences for helping him. He also says he wants his family to be recognized as the ones who found the missing treasures, with Riley also receiving recognition for his assistance, and adds that he doesn't want to go to jail. Sadusky agrees to his terms, after which he also helps the FBI catch Ian while he's breaking into the church in Boston. Days later, the treasures are gifted to different museums around the world. While they're together, Riley complains about Ben not taking the percentage of the treasure he was offered by the government. As he gets into his new car, which is one of the things he got with the small share of money he was offered, he tells Ben and Abigail that he'll see them later. After he leaves, Ben and Abigail appear to now be married, and they go into their new house together. 